it's June and today I've got three different meals that we have eaten over the course of the month. I'm gonna do today some nectarine chicken. The first thing I'm gonna do is get a pot of water on to boil for some pasta. And then I'm gonna cut up a leek and one pound of cherry tomatoes. So cutting up my nectarines, I've got my cast iron pan preheating and my pasta boiling for 12 minutes. And once that preheats, I'm gonna get started browning my chicken. We're actually gonna follow all of the directions today, which is interesting because it's my own recipe, so why wouldn't I? So this is preheated. I'm gonna add in as many chicken thighs as are gonna fit I'm gonna do them skin side up. I'm gonna brown those for a minute and then flip them and then transfer them to a plate. I'm gonna flip these, it's been about two minutes. Give them another two minutes and then transfer them to a plate. I'm gonna go ahead and drain this pasta. And then once that's done, I'll be able to transfer these to a plate. Make sure you save a fourth of a cup of pasta water, I almost forgot. I'm gonna transfer these chicken thighs to a plate. and then toss in my leaf. Those are gonna cook for about four minutes until they start getting nice and brown. While these are cooking, I'm also gonna add a little bit of soy sauce. Cause I don't have salt. Forgot to buy some. My leeks are looking nice and soft. There's a little soy sauce in there for salt. I'm gonna add in my fourth of a cup of pasta water. And then I'm gonna stir this up until it is almost dry. You wanna, you're gonna wanna make sure that you get any stuck on bits into this little sauce that we've got going. So this is almost dry, a little drier than I intended it to get. I'm going to add a half a cup of this lemon ginger echinacea juice. You could also use apple cider, but it's summer, and so I couldn't find apple cider, so I got this. And then a couple tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, and then I'm gonna bring this to a boil. Also gonna add a couple cloves of garlic to this. Oh, that smells good. That smells really good. All right, this is boiling. Now I'm gonna toss in two tablespoons of butter, roughly. Once that melts, I'm gonna toss in some flour to thicken, and then we're gonna add in the rest of our ingredients. Two tablespoons of flour. Ish. Turn it on low and start whisking. Now I've got this really lovely thick mixture. I'm gonna toss in the rest of my chicken. Skin side up so it gets nice and crispy. in 
nectarines and tomatoes. And then this is gonna go in the oven for about 25 minutes. I'll show you what it looks like when the chicken's done. Last thing to do is juice a lemon over it. And then we'll serve this over pasta. Almost forgot. Last thing. Can I see in there? Very important. Basil. 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 We're gonna stir this up, eat it over the pasta. Gonna be delicious. It is 3 p.m. on a Tuesday and I'm starting dinner because the baby is down for a nap and we desperately need groceries uh, in our home. So I'll be going and doing that when she wakes up and I wanted to save myself 5.30 p.m. craziness of trying to cook dinner after we get home from the store, which is 20 minutes away. And so I'm just cooking it now. And then it can sit in the oven while we go to the grocery store, and then I can just warm it up when we get home. It'll be great. But I'm going to make chicken cacciatore today. So I, right now I'm chopping up a leek, and that's gonna be followed by three bell peppers. And then we'll get to the chicken part. Here's my chicken. Like I said, I don't have salt and pepper. I would definitely be using okay. those. And so I'm just gonna liberally sprinkle the top of these with Italian seasoning and nutritional yeast. And then I've got flour for dredging over here and then I'm gonna put it on a plate. So that's what's happening now. delicate operation at this point and I don't want you to get raw chicken on you. My pan is preheated. I'm going to add a liberal amount of olive oil get that heated up nicely and then i'm gonna brown this chicken skin side down skin side down first Is it bubble? yes it's going to bubble and pop so you need to stay back for five minutes on each side and then transfer to a different plate so they're not mixed together and then come back. I actually found that two and a half minutes was plenty for that. So you're gonna do two and a half minutes on each side, five minutes total. My chicken has a few seconds left. Once that timer goes off, I'm gonna transfer it to my plate that I've got back here and then add in my bell peppers and leeks. Here come the bell peppers Make sure you spill some on the oven. That's always a good sign. Always a good sign you're doing good things. All right, my leek is getting nice and soft and starting to brown. So I'm going to add in my garlic, a good solid spoonful. Stir that for about 30 seconds. Actually gonna do a little bit more Italian seasoning too, just to make sure those flavors are throughout. 
Now I'm going to toss in some balsamic vinegar to deglaze our pan. So I'm just going to use this acid to kind of get the crusty bits off the side of my pan. Make sure they're really melding in those flavors. I love the smell of balsamic vinegar. And then I'm going to reduce this down a little bit. So just let it bubble until it gets kind of thick and glazy. All right, it's been a couple minutes. This has reduced down a little bit. Now I'm going to go in with two cans of tomatoes. And about a cup of broth. I'm going to use this little cube and some water. We're going to give this a stir. I'm going to let that broth cube melt down. Now the challenge comes. I'm going to try and fit all of this chicken into this pot with all of the sauce. We'll see what happens. So this is impossibly full and starting to come to a boil. I'm going to turn that off. Cover it and then put it in my oven for 45 minutes at 350 degrees. See y'all in 45 minutes. So my chicken, it's been 45 minutes at 350. My chicken is about, is about at 160. It's not hot enough, obviously. So I'm going to turn my oven up to 375 and put this in for another 15 minutes before I go see what chaos my children are getting into. After that's done, we're going to run to warmer and get pasta and a couple other things. So I'll show you the finished plate then. Here is dinner tonight. We've got this chicken and the sauce that kind of it cooked in, some pasta and asparagus. We are all sitting down to dinner and ready to go. I've had a craving for enchiladas since we left our old house, and so that's what we're making in this kitchen today. Let's get started. Just at the end of preheating, I've got a leek, six mini bell peppers, probably about two or three regular sized bell peppers, and a small russet potato that I'm about to saute in here to get ready for my enchilada filling. I've got some chicken broth right here just warming up and getting ready for my enchilada sauce that we're gonna make in just a little bit. Got about a tablespoon of your favorite plant butter. Give it a swirl. And then I'm going to toss in my leeks and bell peppers. You can wait until the leeks are soft to toss the bell peppers in, but I really don't like crunchy bell peppers, so I do it earlier rather than later. I'm gonna saute this for probably three minutes until it starts to get soft, and then I'm gonna add my potato. 75% of my leeks are getting translucent, so now it's time for my potato. I'm 
going to do the same thing. I'm going to give these a minute or two, and then I'm going to go in with my ground beef and my seasonings. It is time to add in our ground beef. I've got two pounds. And I'm gonna crumble this up and in a little bit I'll come in with my seasonings. All right, my ground beef is broken up and is browning nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my seasonings. I'm doing a one and done today from Bar Top Rubs. This is their Fiesta Spice. Woo! Added a little bit more than I think it probably needed. Actually, it's not. It's just not very well mixed. Okay. Oh, it smells so good. There's some chipotle in there. I just want to make sure my ground beef is seasoned and my potatoes. Potatoes take a lot of seasoning. I am going to use this Fiesta Spice for my enchilada sauce as well. I'm going to finish browning this and then I'm going to lay it on this paper towel line plate to drain while I make my enchilada sauce. My ground beef is browned. I'm going to scoop it out and transfer to this plate. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to scoop instead of drain. I'm going to save, or I want to save, as much of this fat and grease as I can so it can be used in my enchilada sauce instead of, ouch, a different type of oil or butter. There's not enough oil and grease here to do my sauce. I'm gonna turn my burner down to low because this stove runs hot and I'm gonna add about three tablespoons of oil. We're eyeballing everything. And then I'm gonna follow with three tablespoons, roughly, of flour. And maybe about a tablespoon or two, maybe, of my spice mix. And I'm gonna whisk until it becomes nice. It's darkened a little bit. I'm gonna let it darken just a little bit more. Then I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of tomato paste. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna work kinda quick so this doesn't run, or this doesn't burn. Call that two, two and a half. Mix that in. I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing in my broth. Now I'm just gonna bring this up to a simmer, whisking pretty constantly. I may have to bring my pan up just a little bit. I don't wanna bring it up too much. I'm gonna take my spoon and kinda scrape the bottom of the pan. Get all of those good seasony bits off the bottom. I'm just gonna do that until this is thick to my liking. Actually think I'm gonna add a little bit more water oh, 
probably about a cup more water. So that's, and we'll start with half a cup and see how that works. Cause it's gotten a little bit thicker than I really want it. And I'm gonna add a little bit more seasoning too. So once this gets to the consistency that I want it at, I'm gonna add my meat mixture back in just to kind of mix it all together. And then I'm gonna let it cool. I'm probably gonna end up making a second batch of enchilada sauce to go on top of the enchiladas. I think this is pretty good. I don't want it to get too thick. I'm gonna turn the heat, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat off and then mix my beef back in. Make sure you make a big old mess on your stove top. I forgot to add vinegar. Definitely supposed to add vinegar to this after you take it off the heat. So I'm gonna do that now, about a tablespoon. And then once this is nice and combined, I'm gonna set it to the side to cool completely. That looks like enchilada filling to me. All right, I've got everything made, everything's cool, everything's ready. Let's assemble. We're gonna start with two thirds of a cup uh, of enchilada sauce. This is a second batch of enchilada sauce that I made. I've got a full tray. I'm just gonna top with enchilada sauce. And I've got plenty. Like I said, I made a second batch. So I'm just gonna make sure these are nicely covered. It's probably about a cup, I would say. Maybe a little more. And then I'm gonna cover with the rest of this non-dairy cheese. And that is gonna bake until the cheese is melted and bubbly. All right, y'all, this is the finished product. It smells so good. I am so excited to dig in. Thank you again for Bar Top Rubs for really being the seasoning backbone to this dish. We're gonna go get, dig in. You gotta try this. That was a month in my kitchen. I hope that you found something that you could take into your own kitchen. If you wanna check out that seasoning, I've got that order link down below. But other than that, have a great day and I'll see you next time.